Simon said, yeah. So then he would phone up uh, Boy George, Boy George mm -hmm. Paul Young, and say, well, uh, I've got Sting and Simon the Bundy. And this <laughs> basically caused the chain reaction. What happened was everyone who, heard who, who else was doing it and felt that they had to get in on it. And then I got a call from David Bowie, <laughs> David Bowie's office, saying, is Sting actually doing this thing? I said, yeah. <laughs> So then it was, the ball started rolling, yeah. it was unstoppable at that point, mm -hmm. and um, the record was such a success. So I, I felt I was in at the beginning, but really, uh, I, I can't take any credit, really. I mean, I think all the credit must go to Bob Geldof, whose, whose energy and commitment to the thing was uh, unprecedented. And uh, I think he does deserve a Nobel Peace Prize, and I would, I would be... Uh, more than joyful that if it happened. I think it'd be great. I think he's done a wonderful job. Do hmm. you think the same thing could be done for other causes as well? No, I think um, there was all this talk after after the Live Aid concert of, of, of doing it every year. You know, my feeling is that uh, people will become bored with it next year. Mm -hmm. I think uh, it, it might work if you if you had it like the Olympics. If you had it every four years, mm -hmm. you can build up a momentum of interest. But every year, you know, pop is very faddy. It's very cool. next year people will be bored with it, really. And the artists will be bored with it, and the public will be bored with it, and the whole thing will just collapse. But we've raised enough money uh, now to, to make a serious impression on uh, a lot of things. I, I think my, my feeling was, and I expressed this to Bob, is that I didn't want to, the money just to be used to drop food out of the sky, you know, because it doesn't really help. Mm. It might save people for two, two more weeks. Um, what it does is it actually destroys the economy. People, people forget about it, trying to, to uh, grow their own crops. They don't expect the planes to just drop the food, which is tragic, because the uh, what, what we need to spend the money on is actually getting their economy and getting their agriculture back into shape. And that means education. Now, we've allotted some of the money to uh, small caucuses of, of uh, agricultural areas where we can say, this is how you use the land, this is how it is abused here, look at the desert, this is how we should use it. And that's, that's the real value of, uh, of the money, is a long-term solution to, to the problem, not just dropping food out of the sky. Because uh, there's, no point in, there's no point in saving a child for an extra two weeks. As cold and as, uh, as cynical as that sounds, there isn't. Um, what we want is, is those children to live long, happy, fulfilled lives. We don't want to keep them in misery for another six months. They might as well die, and therefore I think it's very, very important that that money is used correctly. We shouldn't just use it to solve our, our guilt, to help, oh, take, take the money, take the money, I want to see more. We should really use it to to uh, give those people a future, not just six months. Some have suggested that we get so drunk in our salutary <coughs> moves there that we forget about the actual problem. And everybody says, well, there are people at Live Aid and Bandit are doing it all, so we'll support them and that'll be the end of the problem. Do you think that's... Uh, uh, well, luckily we earned enough. I mean, we have earned an awful lot of money. It just has to be used right. Yeah. But who takes it from there, though? To well, I mean, if the money is in, in good hands. And I, I also think, uh, I mean, a lot of people came out to me and said, well, you know, will the money get through? And I said to them, well, look, this is the most publicly accountable charity in history. Because, one, it's so public. Everyone involved in it is a public figure. Now, if I, were, if I, if I gave £10,000 to Christian Aid or Oxfam, right, as an anonymous person, I can't ring up and say, well, what happened to my £10,000? say, oh, I just went into the organisation. Now, a sting. <laughs> I can phone up Band Aid and say, um, show me where that money went. And they have to. Because if they, if they say, oh, we, we're not sure, I would raise such a stink. Hmm. And so would everybody else. Hmm. So it's very, very publicly accountable. And if one penny went missing, there are people who would be lynched. And therefore, uh, I'm quite confident about it, as long as we remember not just, just to drop food out of the sky. It's, hmm. I think we c we can do both. We, we can we can cope with the emergency and we can cope with the long term thing. There's enough money. It's just thrilling. <laughs> so as you recall, you saying once in an interview that uh, when playing in front of thousands, 
you felt a sort of a, uh, isolation, loneliness, and that was one of the most powerful senses of loneliness you'd ever felt before. I don't know if that's correct or not, but uh, is it something you still uh, feel now? Um, yeah. There's a profundity about it. There's a kind of irony about it, as being the focus of all this attention and uh, alone. But most of my work is about, uh, most of my best work is really about uh, the paradox of loneliness and that uh, the only joy to be, to be gained from loneliness is the, the, <laughs> the idea that everyone else is lonely, that kind of joins us together. Mm. And um, we can understand each other because of it. And uh, that's part of the, the road to self-awareness is being lonely. You know? I don't think there's anything wrong with that. I think uh, everyone goes through it and everyone should go through it. Okay. Well, thank you very much for your time. Thank you.